In this lecture, we'll talk about ways that we intuit how we feel. So all emotions generate some amount of adrenaline. So if you think about a time when you were really happy and you think about a time when you were really angry, your adrenaline in both situations is probably really high. Your heart's pounding, you might be a little shaky, you feel jittery. The physical reaction tends to be very similar. But sometimes we forget the original source of the emotion. So we look to the environment to find out where the adrenaline is coming from. And we label that adrenaline, that emotion, on the basis of the environment. I'll give you an example from my own life. So I hate driving and I had to visit some family that lived five hours away from me and then drive home. And I got up really early in the morning and got myself ready and packed up my car to drive home so I could just get home and get it over with. And about 10 minutes before I was about to leave, my uncle came up to me and said, you know, we're supposed to meet somebody who lives about a half an hour away from here. That's kind of along the route you're driving. Would you mind taking us? And I felt like I would be a really bad person if I said no. So I was like, okay, I'll take you. Well, then it turns into a whole production where I had to pick up several other family members and they didn't even get out of the house until about an hour later. So I end up being about two hours behind schedule. And the entire time I was driving to this place with all these family members in my car, I was so frustrated. And I was like, God, I could have been two hours toward home instead of just beginning. And the whole time I was driving there, I was like, ugh, my family annoys me so much, and they're so presumptuous, and they just think of themselves, and man, it would have been so much better if I hadn't agreed, and ugh, everything they're saying is annoying me. So I was really irritated. And so we finally get to where the meetup is, and it's at a gas station, and my uncle turns to me and says, it was so great of you that you agreed to drive us all here. Let me fill up your tank of gas. And all of a sudden, I felt this overwhelming joy and how amazing my family is. And I actually teared up with love for my family. And I was just like, my family is the best family. And they really care about people. And they want to make sure they take care of their own. And so I had a complete reversal in my attitude toward my family, probably within about five seconds. And about ten minutes later, as I was driving home, it all of a sudden occurred to me that I had been a victim of misattribution. So I had felt all this adrenaline because of being angry with my family. Then my uncle did something nice for me, and I forgot the fact that I was angry with him, but I still had all of this adrenaline. So I was like, why do I have all this adrenaline? It must be because I have this intense love for my family, and I'm going to tear up because that's how amazing they are. So that's my example of misattribution. A pretty classic example, classic study, and what they do is they have participants hold a pencil in their mouths. And they have two different instructions for participants. In one condition, they have to hold the pencil touching their lips to the pencil. And you can see it kind of makes a frowny face. And in the other condition, they have to hold the pencil not touching their lips, just between their teeth. And you can see when that happens, the person makes a smiley face. And when people are holding the pencil in such a way that they frown, they rate their own emotional states as not happy. And when they're holding the pencil in such a way that they smile, they rate their own emotional states as happy. So obviously nothing's happening in the study. They're not, you know, giving people ice cream in one condition and kicking them in the shin in the other condition. They're doing the exact same thing. The only thing that's changing is how they're being told to hold the pencil, which is influencing how their faces feel to them. And so those participants are reading from the situation, I'm smiling, I must be in a good mood, or I'm frowning and I must be in a bad mood. Essentially says that we are really bad at predicting how long our feelings will last. We generally think that we're going to stay happy or stay sad or stay mad or whatever for much longer than we actually do. So I remember when I finally graduated with my PhD. I was so excited. And this is how I felt. I was just jumping all over the, the place. There's a picture of me jumping on the graduation field. I was so excited. And I was like, this feeling is 
going to last forever and every day I'm going to wake up and I'm going to jump out of bed and be like, thank goodness I'm done with my PhD and I don't have to be in graduate school anymore and I'm super excited about that. And now, if you ask me how I feel about the fact that I have my PhD, I'll say, yeah, that's really cool, but, you know, I have to wash the dishes, and I need to take my dog out for a walk, and I'm kind of in a um, difficult spot because my car's in the shop, so, you know, like, it's nice that I have my PhD and everything, but, eh, whatever, it's great, but I got other stuff I need to worry about. So, I thought when I got my PhD that every day I was going to be super excited about having received my PhD. But what, as you know, effective forecasting predicted, is eventually um, I kind of returned to my baseline level of happiness, and I wasn't that thrilled about receiving my PhD. It also happened the other way. So I remember watching my team lose a game. And this was a really big game, and we were a, a really highly ranked team, and we lost to a very lowly ranked team. And I was really upset about it. And I remember going to the grocery store and, like, sulking around the grocery store and just being really upset and thinking, like, you know, I'm going to be feeling crappy about this for months. <laughs> and now, if you ask me about it, I'm like, eh, you know, kind of sucks that we lost that game, but um, I have... So many other things that I need to be worrying about. So in both situations, in a positive situation and a negative situation, I was not good at predicting how long my own feelings would last. 